Hello, I'm Yang Liu, graduate student at the Department of Chemistry and NEAT Organizer Research Unit, University of California, Davis. This video introduces our work recently published in ACES Nano, Volume 9, Issue 7. The research is a joint collaboration led by Professor Gang Yu Liu and Professor Fu Tong Liu at UC Davis and Dr. Tai Lawrence at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. The paper demonstrates the power of nanostructures in the context of impacting and regulating cellular signaling processes. As you know, a living cell interacts with the external environments such as extracellular matrices by using its membrane receptors. These ligand receptor interactions are typically polyvalent in nature and the arrangement of the ligand receptor clusters is found to exert great impact in the downstream cellular signaling cascades. Therefore, by using engineered extracellular matrices, many researchers, including the teams of Professor George Whiteside and Professor Barbara Build, have shown that the cellular signaling processes and outcomes could be changed. With the development of nanotechnology, our work indicates that these ligands could be arranged with nanometer precision, which enables precise arrangement of the ligand receptor clusters. The outcome of the nanoengineering is striking. Using antigen ligands such as 2,4-dinitrophenol, we immobilize these ligands on surfaces as nano rings. Six designed nanostructures structures were included in our ACS nano paper referred as structures of nano 1 to nano 6. In nano 2, for example, each DMP feature is presented as a nano ring. The periodicity is 800 nanometers, while the ring width and the inner diameter are about 120 nanometers and 153 plus minus 6 nanometers, respectively. The periodicities decrease from 1 micron to 200 nanometers from nano 1 to nano 6. These engineered nanostructures were then soaked in culture media containing red basophytic leukemia cells, sensitized by anti-DMP antibody, namely immunoglobin E or IgE. After one hour soaking, we found membrane nodules formed among nearest labor RBL cells. A membrane nodule is typically 6.75 micrometer long with a diameter of 76 nanometers. From our scanning electron microscopic images, one can see these tubes clearly originated from above the interface, like highway bridges connected neighboring cells. The, pure, the geometry of nanostructures structures does impact the geometry of membrane nanotubes tubes as detailed in our publication. These observations are totally unexpected in the first place because RBL cells are well-known model system to study mass cell activation or energy. In those cases, membrane FC epsilon R1 receptors bound to antigens to form clusters which causes degranulation to release histamine. In addition, formation of membrane nanotubes tubes is not expected among RBL cells because formation of membrane nanotubes tubes requires co-stimulation of two receptors, FC epsilon R1 and CCR1. However, RBL cells do not have CCR1. We think the fact that all nanostructures structures could trigger the formation of membrane nanotubes tubes is due to the geometries we designed. While the closed packing of FC epsilon R1 is difficult to form, so as such, the cells are forced to follow a different cellular signaling process from degranulation, such as formation of membrane tubes. Our prior work demonstrated that surface bound antigen, when closely packed with 20 nanometer periodicities, exhibited high potency in activating muscle cells. Our narrow rings with periodicities significantly larger than 20 nanometers therefore discourage the activation of RBL cells but encourage the formation of membrane nanotubes. Membrane nanotubes 
provide membrane continuity among kinetic cells and enable intercellular exchange of both membrane-carrying molecules and the cytoplasmatic contents. They play vital roles in many physiological processes including immune defense, tumor genesis, transmission of pathogens, and cell differentiation. Membrane nanotubes have been observed among various cell types such as ferrochrome cytoma cell nice, leachal killer cells, dendritic cells, and T cells. Our finding of membrane nanotube formation among immune cells sparks much interest in regulation of immunological processes. More, in, more importantly, our work demonstrates that nanotechnology could open many more opportunities to regulate cellular synchrony processes previously unanticipated or unimaginable. We hope more and more research and work will be carried out in this exciting expedition.